fog, you're running out of breath, the target is in front of you, they jump through a balcony window, and you completely fall behind as you are jumping behind them, landing on the ground in the, in the, in the foyer area of the garden of the place that you guys were called to protect. Running through your head, pulse pounding, all you know is that the mayor has been assassinated and that your assassin's target is in front of you. As you land on the ground below you, you see your three friends also running up through the garden gates. Going around to the side, the assassin disappeared. What do you guys want to do? So, uh, I'm going to yell out to the group, spread out, and search the bushes. So, you two take the right side, we'll take the left side. Good? Deal. Deal. Okay. So which way are you going to go? So, 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 the pool, you can see a body of one of the gardeners floating in the pool. Blood is starting to pilfer the crystal clear blue water. You can see that a dagger is staying, staying in the gardener's back as they're floating there in the water. Freshly just happened. Is it like right in front of me? Right there. Yeah. Okay. Can I grab the dagger? You That's want to get into the pool? <laughs> Fuck! I don't want to get into the pool. No. <laughs> Does your partner have a long sword? Can you use this as a stick to kind of poke the body close to you? Round the corner, and it's just you can hear the gasps coming from Kira from just a few feet away from you, but you guys are still laser focused because you have no idea what the danger is coming around the corner. Cool. You can see the whole pool, there's just a body. Yes. All right. Well, you, you don't have a clear view of your right, body. Right, right. You, you just you see Kira looking into the yes. pool. Go up and inspect the yeah. bush. So which one? Okay. This one here? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll go okay. Alright. The bush is overgrown. It's at least 12 feet tall standing, so you can't see over it. It is like one of those fir trees that are really tall. Right, you two, what do you two do? Can I cast the lights? Yes, you can. Can I cast the lights? Okay. Right. And what are you looking for? I'm looking for any signs of, uh, you know, undead, uh, magic. Okay. So there's no signs of undead that you can tell that are inside this area. And you do know that magic was just used recently. So I'm gonna move on up to where she's at. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll be instead of getting looks from the camera guys. Keep standing up. Alright, Kira, what are you doing? So you just... I just want to make it look like it's on fire. So you're almost casting Thermitage and you just... Yep. Okay, all right. So yes, you you, you kind of just focus your energies and literally the bush just... But it 
it's not really burning, it just looks like it's burning. Okay. Alright. Alright, neutral, Amy? Old um, beer? Actually, I'll, I'll call Pulse with the dermatology and the death push. With this push right here? Yep. Okay. Alright, so you speak out the words and the spell and the cantrip just floats across and the bush appears to, to be like it catches on fire. So you know, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. I use my movement to come up here and start searching into the bush, basically. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Search into the bush. Yeah. All right. All right. Roll an investigation check. Nine plus zero. Nine, Nine plus zero. All right. As you're kind of making your way through the bush, you find a dagger that's adorned with a silver skeleton as the hilt and the hilt, and you can see that the dagger is covered in blood, hidden underneath one of the bushes there. Like it was purposely discarded. I'm gonna shout that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. To everybody. Shout to Alright. Okay. So you guys hear Olamir belt out, I found a dagger! I'm gonna take one of my javelins out and I'm gonna step in before and look for anything that sticks out, like a straw sticking out of the water where he's underwater, can breathe. Okay, so how are you going into the pool? Are you like just stepping into the pool? Or are you like full on cannonballing it? <laughs> what, what, are, what are we doing? Uh, I'm just going to step into it. Okay, all right. Put one foot in and one foot on the edge right here. All right, go ahead. So I'm going to straddle it right here. There you go. Okay. All right, you kind of step in and roll a perception check. It's a nine. It's a nine. Okay. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary because most of the pool is now pretty cloudy because of the blood. So the person that was stabbed in the back, they were slowly dying as you guys approached. I mean, they hadn't quite died yet, but the blood was so intense and flowing, it just, like the, the pool was clouded now. So, how big is this pool? I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's, it's pretty cool. 15 by 30 feet. Is there any plants or anything, is, anything in it? No, no plants. No plants, so it's just a better pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, the pool is about 12 feet deep, so. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Except for the end of the year on, so it kind of goes down to a slant, right? So, all right. Uh, the max depth is 12 feet. Over here. So. I'm gonna go about waist deep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on waist about waist right. deep. So that's about 15 feet in. All right. As you are standing there, you're kind of you're waist deep in, but you can't see anything. It's not clear at all. What do you do? I'm gonna cast a uh, mage hand. Okay. Into the. Can I do that? Yeah. To make the pool like illuminated or whatever, so we can see. Mm -hmm. Or no? Get, I mean, blood is pretty thick, so it's kind of cloudy in formation, right? So, okay. like, you might see, you might see the hand glowing, but you, it wouldn't emanate light. So you wouldn't be able to see in it. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. Um. Okay, I'm gonna get in the pool too. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Olamir and Astrid. Right I think we're just going to go to the edge of the pool and just try to use a long sword to just try to drag the body closer. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to move up there? Okay, alright. There we go. Alright, so you're going to stick your long sword in? Yep, and try to drag the body closer. Okay, alright, so roll a dexterity check. So that 20. 20, alright. Oh, yeah. So you, you, you kind of tip the sword into yeah. cloth and you start slowly pulling it towards you. Pull him here. I come back around so about 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 <coughs> to right here. Yep. And use druid craft to clear the water of the blood. Okay, alright. 
Yeah. All right. So as you start to craft, or so you start to cast your craft, it hits the pool. This vibration starts to echo through the water, and you can see the the blood start to clear away. Rolling dexterity saving throw. The eleven. Yeah. All right. As soon as you start to cast, and all of a sudden you feel something grab your sword and pull you into the pool. Oh. Push, okay. You splash down oh, into the pool. The <laughs> all right. And as you two are standing there from behind you, jumping out of the water. Shit. Cool. All right. Nice. All right. So you are in the pool. Yeah. Wrestling with another person. Yeah. All right. Your attack. Stop. That went funny and. <laughs> All right. All right. Roll your attack. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. Thirteen. You hit. Roll your damage. <laughs> so six hit points. All right. You kind of just you're splashing around as and you you yank the sword from from this person and it just rips through their hands and kind of blood okay. starts to fill even more into the water. Uh, Oliver. So, I'm spinning, turn around, as I spin, javelin's going up, sword shield coming out. Okay. I'm turning, coming forward, and I'm swinging my sword for the fences to try to take his head off. Alright, roll your d20. <laughs> Five. Five. Alright. He just ducks out of the way as you kind of you're you're swinging with full force. You just spin around just even a little bit more, just because you he just you overswing over the top of it. All right, it's the enemy's attack. The one in the water pulls out his dagger and just starts swinging right for you. All right, eighteen. Is three hit points. So you just kind of feel the stick right in your side. You guys hear Astrid put out a little bit of a yelp and just. All right. The next one is attacking you. Shag nasty. Uh, seven. I'm guaranteed you're probably missed. Your armor class is probably. I think. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then here, this one charges and jumps in the air, bringing, trying to bring down its short sword on top of you. Six plus five is 11. Thirteen. Misses you. You step out of the way and he lands in the pool and just splash. Okay, it is now Olamir, your attack. <laughs> All right, in that case, I want to grab a porch, right? When it's movement, splash, attacking with the scimitar. Okay. Yeah. All right, roll your attack. Well, that was way too much. Fifteen. Nineteen total. Nineteen. You hit. Yeah. Roll your damage. Six. Four. Six damage. Six damage. Okay. All right. So you you bring down the slice, and as soon as you hit, it cuts off his left hand and flops into the water. He just looks at you, and just his hood comes back off, and you just see these jet black eyes with blackness streaking in and out of his skin. He just stares at you, and just and then yeah, yep. All right. Back at the top of the combat round. So this is all over. So I'm attacking the one that's closest to her. Okay, so you're turning from that one and attacking yep. that one. Okay, all right, go ahead. 14. 14, you plus, hit. So, so three plus three, six. Yeah. Yes, six hit points. All right, so you kind of spin around hitting him. He's focused on her and slashes across the top of his arm, um, but unfazed. All right, Astrid, you're up. All right, so if I'm on the guy, he'll probably kill me. Okay, roll. Yeah. 17. You hit. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. All right, roll your damage. All right. Yeah, three. Discard the killing stroke. Hell yeah. It goes into a brilliant bulk burst of flames. And maybe some screaming. <laughs> Hell yeah. And down it goes. All right. All right, you ignite it on fire and it's just screaming and it dives under the water in an attempt to douse itself out. But when it goes under the water, it just body just resurfaces and floats on its stomach. And that's yes. kind of cool. <laughs> yes, it is dead. All right, all right, the enemy's attack. The first one's going to attack you, Oliver. 15 plus two is 17. Miss, all right. 
And the second one is still attacking Kira. 18 plus 2 is 20. Yep, that definitely hit. Right, 1d6 plus 2 is 6 hit points. Wow. Oh. Okay. And then Kira's going to attack Kira. It's five to your attack. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I have five to your attack, and then the this. So plus three would be so one d six plus three your damage. Okay, cool. All right, we are now up. Olimir. All right. I'm Your sorry. Step. No, yeah, Olimir. Yeah. Back. All right. I'm gonna use my movement check. I'm coming. <laughs> Basically, move here. Face up as a bonus. Just pop out. Here. There we go. Okay. And then attack. Similar with my scimitar. Scimitar, the one that there? Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, two. Right. So total six. So you 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 misty step over the top and you land and you land and bring down your scimitar across. But as he's swinging down towards Volamir, you just miss. So everything is obviously happening simultaneously at once. So just miss. Okay. All right, Kira. I'm gonna shoot this one right here. Okay. All right, fire away. Ten. Ten. Okay. All right. So you fire, and the bullet just lands in the house back over there. It pings into the into there. As it pings, also you notice coming from your right side are two long black cloaked people. They're not a part of this royal house. They're they're chanting as they're walking close, and one of them is swinging something black. It's not emanating anything. It's just swinging in between their hands. It, now? <laughs> it is now top of the combat round. I can cast detection. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to attack this guy right here. All right. Roll away. <laughs> what did you get? A two. A two? Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. Swing in the mess. All right. So you swing, and again, he just... He's he's starting to move around and he's trying to move towards. You. So. Do you want a different dice? He traded my D20. Do you want a different dice set? We're gonna want another dice. Something that might like you a little bit better. We got a score somewhere. All right, all right. Uh, Astrid. All right, I'm gonna cast the tech magic on those things. Lights up like a Christmas tree. Sweet. Like okay. immense a magic power. At least we know. Um, all right. All right. Um, bonus action or anything like that? Um, crossbow. Got to shoot ahead. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nine? All right. Yep. Yeah. Bolt just goes off into the distance. Shit. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yep. All right. This one turns to you and goes up to Olimir. Nine. Then turns to Bolivar. Got a 20. Yep. Seven hit points. All right. All right. So as it, these two move closer, they move closer, all of a sudden you hear them chanting together. And as they chant together, all of a sudden as you're standing there, or you're kind of floating in the water because you're at the deep end, right? So it's 12 feet. All of a sudden you notice the body starts to shake. Okay. And it, it, it raises its head up out of the water. <laughs> its eyes reignite with life. Oh, we are setting up the on fire again. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Olimir. I'm going to just say, can I say within Rupia's five foot range, we'll go one step to the side. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not take an opportunity to attack. I snipe here and it will like to hit both. Okay. So deck saving throw. Alright, what's your spell DC? 13. Alright, first one got a nat 20. Oh. The second one got an 18. Alright, <laughs> oh. right, Kira. I want to do my supernatural knowledge on <laughs> these, this fuckery right. right here. As you, 
you you kind of you you focus your energies and you just kind of stare and it's almost like a psionic energy just kind of reaches out and kind of envelopes them and almost like the voices of all the ancients and the ancestors just kind of start to fill you and what they tell you is impossible it can't be true because they haven't been seen in 2,000 years Bob, what is of it? death accolades. We work with that. Okay. All right. That sounds it's fun. fun. Do I learn any of their weaknesses or anything like that? It's unknown. Shit. That's fun. Oh, work is super vulnerable next turn. Love that. Okay. <laughs> Can I do anything else or just doing that? That's it. Oh, you have a bonus action. Right. Who, are you, who are you shooting for? Uh, this one right here. Fire away. Okay. That's an 18. You hit? Yeah. Fuck yeah. So that's an 8 plus 4. Twelve. Twelve. All right. So you you cock back and you just you focus. You take a deep breath and you slowly pull the trigger, and the arrow fires. Describe a killing stroke. Hell, right, right in the face. The bolt spins through the air and, just, and spins him around and he falls down to the ground. Don't fuck with my friend. This one. Oh, yep. All right. Thank you. <laughs> this one's back up, bro. Yep. Shit. Right. Yep, partially yep. back up, the head is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's all this charred remains. <laughs> Alright, top of the round. What you guys want to do? I'm going to take my sword and try to run it through his, his heart. Alright, roll away. You can do it. <laughs> 13. Not bad. Congratulations, you hit. Roll your damage. Eight. Eight. Total. Total. Okay. Describe your killing stroke. Take my sword, put it around his his head, and I shove my horn that I got right here through his face to the back of his head. Hell nice. Yeah. Brutal. All right. Love it. All right. So you literally just you grab your your blade, you just bend down your head. Just, I'm like hell yeah, Frank, get up. <laughs> Right, his, his skull just kind of caves in and splits. I'm just going to do a golf clap about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashton, you're up. After the golf clap, I'm ready to set that fucker on fire. All right, 11. Ah, uh, you missed. Yep. Sounds like a bitch. Yep. Shit. All right, no enemies go. All right, so this one attacks you again. Uh, 15. That hits. Hits. 1d6 plus 2. Three hit points. All right. This one is turning to attack Uh, 10. Yes. All right. And then this one moves up and casts Ray of Frost. All right. Ray of Frost. Nat 20 against Bolomir. So 8 cold damage. Times two is twelve hit points. Oh, All right, you freeze. Just kind of you just kind of stand there. Roll Constitution saving throw. Four plus one. All right, you do you pass out unconscious? <laughs> you are now at. Let me see. So you're at negative one. Okay. All right, negative one. Oof. You you pass out and you fall into the water. Your armor starts to drag you down underneath the water. All right, it is now Olamir. And say, I'm gonna try to get these guys. You save him. Okay. So first, I'm gonna use my Raven blessing of the Raven mm -hmm. for a weapon attack of six. Ten to hit. Miss. Miss. Yeah. All right. So then I'm gonna scamper with a second face step to here. This one, two, yep. So that fairy fire. Yes, fairy fire to light up these two. Okay. So now we have an advantage on them. Yay! So that was action, bonus action. Second okay. bonus action. Okay, okay. All right. so that's my turn. Cure. I think, so he's like starting to like sink into the water, correct? Yes. I'm going to get in the water and try to get him from so he's not fucking drowning. <laughs> How much do you weigh? Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. You're a, drag, you're a dragonborn, I'm so you're dragonborn. at least 250. I, I like that's what I am. But water floats. Let's see. Yeah. Well, armor does, and scales do that's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm 300. 
300 pounds. All right, so Damn. you jump into the water. Just keep my head up. Yeah, can I just keep his head up? <laughs> you roll a strength check. <laughs> the negative one? Yeah. <laughs> Standard, right? Oh man. <laughs> Did you get a one? No, I got a five. Okay. I got a six, right. but negative one. All right, so one. you're struggling to just kind of keep him afloat, five. and you're starting to be pulled down with him. So as you're trying to, so hard to kind of keep him up. It's like, come on, Fred, fucking so help me out here. Okay. All right. So top of the combat round. Yeah, sixty seconds. Discuss. All right. So there's first. That's it. <laughs> I didn't like that. Love the face. <laughs> uh, that's right. I forgot you do it behind the screen. Yes, yeah. I do behind the screen. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, it is now Astrid. You're up. All right. Um, you just need the blessing of the Raven once again. Get try to like fuck her up. All right. Seven plus five. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You hit. Hell yeah. All right. Wait. wait. This says on here um, that you need. Uh, Let's say you need that needs to take a, a dexterity saving throw or take one d eight or eight or eight damage. It fails the dexterity saving throw. Oh, all right, and plus one d eight plus two. All right, so ten. Yep. Ten total. Okay. All right. So you light it up, but like this time it's unfazing. It's not even reacting to the pain. It's just That's moving okay. towards you. Okay. Can I use my bonus action for the buffalo? Okay. Well, no, if you use your blessing, cast a spell, that was your act, that was your bonus action. Oh, okay. That's so you have your action. action oh, so. nice. So, yes. Yeah, um, run the buck away. Okay. All right. So you, you can, can disengage, out, right? Yes. So you disengage without creating an attack of opportunity. Yep. Right there. All right. So you run away. All right. <laughs> Good job. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. The first, this one now casts Ray of Frost again at Kira. <sighs> Uh, got a 12. 13. It Barely, missed you. It missed me. So, literally, you just see it. As the Ray of Frost comes down, you just duck under and you pull Bolivar Bol down with you, and like just a sheet of ice covers over the top of where you're at. Not the entire pool, so you can okay. navigate okay. Where, or okay. just where you're at. Yep. Okay. okay. That being underwater. Alright. This one um, turns and looks at you and pulls out the same type of silver dagger that you found. You see, just pull it out. And he just chucks it at you. That's rude. <laughs> How rude. How rude do you want it to be? Oh my god. Give it to me straight. Twenty. Oh fuck. Yeah. All right, roll Constitution saving throw. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> no. That one. No. <laughs> okay, hey, this so. Is no. So <laughs> Mike other is freaking rules? out because he knows my homebrew rule. So if yeah. you fail a Constitution saving throw on on a critical hit, it's an automatic death. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we tip him over. <laughs> <laughs> so the dagger spins through the air, just nails you in the head, and you just roll off the top of the roof, and your body hits the ground. <laughs> All right, so we're, all right. we're up. We're all that's left. Shit. Get your ass out from under that water. Or that. I or am. That, or that ocean I am. That's what I got seven of these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we are. Now, yep. Polar mirror is down, dead. Kira, you're up. I'm gonna pour a fucking potion down his fucking throat. All right. So you're under the water. You just. Yep. Yep. Down his throat. Just pour it. Yes. Sorry, you're taking in a max health then. Yes. Okay, max health, so you get 10 hit points back. Woohoo! Sweet. So you're at 10. Is there anything else I can do? Nope. You have a bonus action. So um, some of your cantrips is, well, uh... So actually, since my fucking hit points are so low, can I take the potion myself? As a bonus action, yes. yes. And then you have to roll it, so 2d4 plus 2. 2d4? Yeah. So two of them? Yes. Plus what? Two. two. Breath weapon, which is lightning. Okay. This bitch right here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. Congratulations, you get. Alright, so. Uh, 2d6. Little square 
Eight total. All right. So you blast it. He just starts to to shiver and shake. And as he's shivering and shaking, you're just like focused on it. He just. Yeah. Hell yeah, right. friend. Fuck him up. And then All right. I'm going to use my Blessing of the Raven. Okay. And I'm going to take my jab one. I'm going to stick it to that back of his head. All right. Roll your attack. Eight. Total. Yep. All right. The javelin just flies past him and sticks into the. Sticks into the wall. Yep. Astrid. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, dude. Damn. Yeah. 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 Once again, we are going to go for that lovely sacred flame. All right. Cast away. Roll. 20. Yes! Oh, yeah. Suck it! <laughs> <laughs> Maximum oh. double damage. That's what's up. That is 1d8 of radiant damage. So, so 16 hit points. Yep. Describe a killing stroke. Oh, yeah. Once again, it starts pulling, the fire starts puffing at the feet, going straight up towards the head. Nice little candle situation. You just <laughs> kind of focus it's, like you're enjoying it. it. You're just watching it yes. shiver and shake. And slowly burn, and he's Hell screaming yeah, and yelling. Yes. All right, until finally he falls over dead. Yes. So you guys are all standing there, and then you just hear coming from the entrance gate. Uh, I never knew the order could be so brave. And you see. These three come walk through. Damn. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, such brave initiates. But you failed your task. You failed saving the mayor. Pity. Don't you think? I give him a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Just lift your hand out of water. <laughs> I do the same thing. What he said! Uh, uh, That's okay. Such a arrogance or pride <laughs> of both of you. This is a shame. And he looks to the two women he's got and goes, No survivors. And they start to move forward and their hands start to glow and pulsate. The ear piercing sound starts to echo through the garden, and you're all grabbing your hands. And then out, out of the corners, you're grabbing your hands. You see somebody come running from the top of the rooftop, flipping down and landing in front of them, and a light to just okay. cast and flies away. And then you, as soon as the light clears, they're gone. And you see your captain. Our fearless leader, hello. <laughs> Booking long enough. <laughs> mm. All right. Can I use a quick action just to just down a potion to restore my sure. HP? Sure. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and absolutely. we need to get down him alive. Yeah. Um, someone he walks it. over. <laughs> Corbin turns around, looks at you guys, and goes, "Is everyone okay?" Oh, Mayor's dead. Yeah, he's dead, man. He's dead. He died. We gotta fix it. He walks over and you see him grab the pendant that he's having on in on his on the same pendant that you guys have. He grabs the pendant and walks over and lays his hand on top of all the little mirror and he goes, ah, Father of Lights, penetrate through the darkness. Let the soul stay in the body and restore the mind. And this light just starts to blow around all the mirror. Nice. And he raises up. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you. And how much rejoicing. <laughs> Is everyone else okay? A little banged up. Yeah. No love. Yeah. Next time, go out the front. Stuff. Yes. Oh, it's your fault that we went to the back. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, we're going to have to
the, to the school with the knife going through one side and the wand going through the other. May I see it? I hand it to him. Do you know yeah, about this? Something. I don't know of any. I've heard rumors, but this is something that maybe we can take to the glass hole, Captain, and they can let us know further. Well, I'm just going to hold up the little pendulum thingy out the bag. It's like, hey, do you know anything about this? Or do I need to do a reading on it? What I want you to do with that immediately is put it down. <laughs> it's going to do exactly that. <laughs> Asher just goes, okay. <laughs> Uh, that is a death curse omen, and had you had it on for much longer, you would have turned into one of them. Shit. Okay, well, as long as you know that. It's good to know. Alright. Would he be able to tell me anything about the dagger that he found? Because we traded daggers. Would I show it to him? Would yeah, he you guys want to? Yeah. I'll Everybody show it to him. Show it, show it. Don't have to be aware of something. I see that. <laughs> he looks at it. And he turns around for a moment, and he he's, turns back, and his eyes are just like his cat eyes are just like. You f- you found this some then? Some queen him. <laughs> yeah, this was the one that killed me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was another one in the bush. I got that Here has the one I found. This explains why the energy left me more greatly than before, bringing keeping your soul from leaving your body. This is impossible. What is it? Oh, it's See the score I built here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Initiate students, I want you to look closer at it. And he holds it out. Yeah. Alright, you guys all kind of stare closer. Yeah. As you guys are looking at it, you notice it what looks like is a centipede moving in and out of the skull eyes. Oh, cool. This is not possible. This has to be a replica or remake. But it looks just like a dagger of plague. Dagger of plague? Plague was one of the main generals of the Death King. He was a fallen angel, cursed by the ancient one. His wings made of hands from his victims. He scoured the earth and everywhere he went left nothing but death, decay, and disease. But these were buried with him. So this that can't be someone who the body. No, because his body was left in secret. Only one knew where it was. Who was that? And I doubt he is someone who gives away secrets. He, he brings out a cloth and kind of wipes off your blood. <laughs> Heck, he's the only one that knows where this was. He needs to take her back. Where can we find him? The angel kick. Are you not paying attention to the class? It's not a real angel. It's a fucking angel so upstairs. Five weeks ago. I get ago. so distracted. Like, I'm I know. Sorry. I know. But you so badly want to be a, a, an investigator. A I know. It's a problem. Dude, you Use say- your mind, not your eyes, Kira. Okay. Angel. Let me focus. Upstairs neighbor. Okay, I've got ADHD, okay? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> she suffers with the plague of not being able to focus. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Oh, shit. So, uh, I want to go to each one of these guys and pop out a tooth. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, get your trophy. Somebody's yeah. been watching the Pacific. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good miniseries, though. It is a great miniseries. Really disturbing when he's pulling out. But go ahead. Right. So, so I'm popping all the teeth out, but I didn't roll anything. Um, nope. Okay. No. You want to see the him. other assassins have the same tattoo? Okay. The the go, right around yeah, the yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you go you go over look and sure enough, know what you're looking for. You have to roll and immediately find that the other assassins do have that label. Can we check to see if the other assassins have other that have the same dagger? Well, you've already got yeah. two. two. So yeah. yeah. One yeah. More. Yeah. The floating one. Yeah, we'll yeah. check. I'll check floating. Then you get into the pool. Yep, again. All right. So you kind of just kind of plop into the pool, and Corbin's looking at you like, "What are you doing?" There might be something on them that we might need. That these two other two did not have. 
Who knows? Shouldn't you always like to be dirty every day? <laughs> I get blamed by the other captains because you tend to smell. Good hey, when should be nice. We just went through like yeah. a whole shitload of stuff and you're calling us dirty now? Come on, you're Captain! Of, you're part of the Order of the Raven. You're going to go through a lot more hell than it is. Yes. And there's and a good that's chance, that's love, that you won't even make it out of the Order. And well, that with that attitude, we won't. I've heard worse, just as we, so that'll I mean, be fine. My I got you, though. Captain, <laughs> I got you. My job as your captain is not only to train you in the ways to fight, kill, and hunt things, but it is also to raise you in the standard that is, that is glorified to according to the Rose Guild. Your guild is specifically designed to protect the royal family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which we have failed at here today. I know, read but the in room. in the case of assassins, read the there room. always be something, each one of them could have had something separate. So, that's very simply sorry. I'm not saying that we shouldn't check the body. I'm simply saying that is covered in filth. I can meat. take a bath later. I'll take one immediately after this. It'll be all right. I mean, I'm still standing in the pool. So. <laughs> <laughs> the dragons are always filthy. All right, so we're going to Can I splash him with, can I splash the captain with water? You really want to do that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to really want to fuck around and find out? <laughs> No, I don't so, really want to do it. Alright, so we're gonna check the assassin's body. I wanna ask for like a whole investigation check. Alright. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I wanna ask him if he watched the battle. Did I watch the fight? Did you watch your fight? No, I was dealing with the with the assassin in the front. Because I wanted some construction. Twelve. Twelve? Yep. Alright, so you you actually you don't find any dagger. Okay. On I'm looking for even letters too. You find anything? Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah, this was funny. Yeah. There's a dagger in the back of the the guard. It was floating. Yeah, that's why they were checking. Yeah. But still, doesn't hurt to check the letters and other stuff. <laughs> this shit's. The captain of the guard is waiting upstairs for us. We must go and report what we found. Okay. All right. And he casts pre uh, pre dissertation on you and you kind of clean up. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> so positive. I love it. You're always positive. Honestly, I'm just like, this supposed to come on your daddy? Oh, boy. Of course, I get these smart mouths. Smart mouths. No, Captain. I'm just very glad that you're here. You kept me alive. I have no complaints. <laughs> You know I'm glad that you soul did not leave your body because I would not have been able to save you if that happened. And I give him no. But. <laughs> blade of the shield, slam, and a salute to him. <laughs> hey, when life gives you lemons, you know what you do? You throw them back. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is not an official <laughs> Order of the Raven statement. As you all will know. Yes, we know. <laughs> As you all will know, our official statement is we live together or we die alone. So, sorry. let's. Sorry, Cap. Yeah. Upstairs, all of you? Uh -huh. Alright, come. <coughs> Did we get a pet zombie? Yeah. yeah! Guys, listen, my boss is a dick. <laughs> <laughs> come on, friend! <laughs> Like, I would 100% love to become a necromancer just for that pure. That's so great. <laughs> As you guys walk in, there's a, there's this very attractive human man kind of leaning over the top of the body. He's he's just got the sheet up, and he's just staring at the body of, of the mayor, and he puts the cloak down. He stands up and turns to you. All right, let me hit straight. What happened? So well, we were in the courtyard, got jumped by a bunch of uh, assassins, assassins, and two, two main, two main yeah, looking things. Yes, uh, looking things. Uh, they have this. They have this seal on their clothes. Show them the seal. I'm good. Hands up, Show them the dagger. And we've collected two, three daggers, three, dag three daggers from the guys. Yeah. Uh, How did the death happen? 
Have we killed him? No. How did it make the king's brother I die? I guess he stabbed. Well, we slipped up. Yeah, we messed up. I'll nice. take full blame for it. Yeah. He tells us to go through the back. Corbin and Blue Blue just pause and goes. Robert, listen. We were assigned initially to assign to this as you guys pulled the guild, the generational guild, the seven years from here and on to a further quest. This was supposed to last a day. We've been here a week. My initiates have only been in training for seven weeks. They don't understand all of the tactics. However, if there were any slip-ups or mistakes, it falls on the captain of this room, not you. However, this assassin was hiding that pot over there. And he points over into the corner, over into this corner, <laughs> and you can see a pot just kind of sitting there that's been tipped over. Once out of the pot, Corbin and I were standing over here by the fire. We were discussing things with Edward when we saw the blood begin to pour from Edward's mouth. As you can tell by the body, there is a meat hole in the back. We couldn't have seen it. Robert just kind of goes, rubs his face. All right, all right. Just know that probably in two days you'll be summoned to the king's court. I know you'll stand before the king and give testimony of what has happened here. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes. Be thankful you're just initiates. The king has a history of punishing those that are in the servitude that fail the royal family. And then he snaps his finger, and then two guards, two city guards come in and they kind of pick up the body and put it onto a wooden stretcher. Before they take it, I just want a druid cupped a rose and lay it on. Right. Lay it on top, and Robert just looks at you and nods, and then they walk out. Well, then she gets head to your bunks. We're still guarding this place. We'll see you in the morning. Thanks, Captain. And he nods on the house. All right, what do you guys want to do? You listen to our captain this time, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay up and watch. Um, yeah. I'm going to pull a, just watch, make sure nothing else happens, let them sleep. I'll take, I'll help out with some. I think I watches. stay up with him because I want to use, like, I want to try to figure out this dagger. Okay. While I'm awake, I, I, I want to study it. Okay. You want to use your supernatural to check yes, them out? I want to investigate the area. Yeah. Okay. Outside still or just inside? Just inside where the death was caused. If I see any markings in the base or the whatever he was, what he was hiding yeah. in, see if there's just anything that Roll could. investigation check. No, because you're looking at the dagger, remember? Yeah, I'll help. Alright, so I got a six. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Plus with the investigation marker, plus five. Seventeen. So, so you know, inside of this golden pot, you see that there's a black soot inside. So, I want to take a sample of that soot. Okay, alright. Scrape it off. Okay, alright. Uh, yeah, I would like to investigate this. Uh, Alright, you sit down, kind of crisscross applesauce style, yeah, sit down, sure. and you're holding the dagger, and you're just sitting there going into a meditation as you're holding it, and you're gripping it with your hands, and as you're gripping it, the you feel this ancient ancestral energy come from you and go around to the dagger as you're, as you're studying it, and the, you're getting flips and flashes of memories of evil days of people being slain and skewered with this dagger and being sawed and their souls being stolen with the dagger. So it takes souls? Maybe. Or it could be the user that takes the soul. Okay. So, and you get, a f you get a flickering shadow of some large monstrosity with huge wings that's just flapping. That's all you got. That's all I got? That's all you get. 
You do know that the dagger does 1d8 plus 6 damage. And it's cursed, which I don't know how or why. Oh, cursed. I can help out with that one later. It's good to have an actress that's on board. Okay. Alright, what do you guys want to do? I'm kind of curious about something. But I'm going to ask her about the dagger. I'm going to tell you all about it. Alright. Yeah. I'm just out of curiosity. I'm going to try to. I'm kind of curious about something. I'm just going to have holy water on me, so I'm going to try to sprinkle a little bit on the dagger and see what happens. Hold I'm trying to find out. I'm, right. I'm holding it. Yeah. Okay, right. go for yeah, it. Yeah, a couple drops. Right, so you just kind of drip, drip. You pull out this glass vial that you have, and you just kind of drip a couple of drips on it. And the first one hits, and it sizzles a little. And then the second one hits, and nothing happens. Some rest, one of us stays up. And we can take shifts. Take shifts? Yeah, we'll take shifts for sure. Mm-hmm. We'll long, long rest? <clears throat> yeah. I only need four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Being a quadrant, and you don't even really sleep, you just might take. Yeah. So. For sure. Take shifts for sure. Alright. Alright. The rest of the evening goes without trouble. You guys wake up or break out of a trance and and just still and playing out over and over again everything that happened. How could you have done better? What caused this? How did they get into the house? The house was boarded and sealed, wasn't it? These are all the questions that are going through your head. You guys all meet back out in the foyer area and there Corbin is and he is sitting on one of the couches reading a book and smoking a pipe. It's just, oh, Michigan's. Did you rest well? Yes, sir. Yep, fully refreshed. I feel like I tell him about what my visions that I got from that dagger. I feel like I I tell him all of that. And I tell him about the huge creature with wings and shit. Uh, As I told you, supposedly this is a dagger of play. But as I partnered with one of my friends just yesterday, they told me that the body is still seen. The one person that knows confirmed with them that it is still seen. Do you trust this person? I trust this person with my life. I trust this person with my child's life. You trust me with this So, you think I'm just making it up what I see? I don't think you're making anything up. Okay. I'm not accusing you of being alive. Okay. I am just saying. I don't know how this dagger is here, but what if it's the real one? There are many evil wizards in this place that can reincarnate and remake things. So they can replicate things? Yes, and that metal is strange. What's the strange about the metal? Well, it says we've got the holy bar for starters. <coughs> the metal shouldn't be here. We don't use that metal. What kind of metal is it? The only metal that is seen from that comes from the Eden metal. Her homework here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, you're good. Eden now is uh, pretty much eaten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it's the place where the ancient one and the celestials communed with the created. So. so that's where this metal came from? Yes. But Eden now was sealed off after the Eternity Wars, after the betrayal of the Death King. Do you want this in your class? I mean, I do. I just, I, you know, I got the whole thing where I can't concentrate and stuff. Like, I'm yes, trying. Yes, you're I've, AB, got, I've gotten you're better. ABC being exactly. Is, so I've gotten okay. better, though. Right. I've gotten better. Uh, we need to get potions. Uh, so I, uh, you know, I take the, the sample of the soot. I show it to him. Ask him if he knows anything about it. His views on the soot is if it's just regular soot or if it's... This is a spy mission. It helps cloak someone in the darkness. How they hid inside the box, I do not know, but that's what this is. So he kind of puts on the ground. 
Five minutes later, Corbin comes back and he goes, "So, um, we we're not going to see the we're not going to go see the king. Um, apparently, he's coming here. Oh, right now. Shit, how close is he? And the door behind Corbin opens, and royal guards come walking in, and they start lining the walls around. And then a few of the emissaries come walking in, they're dressed in fine red cashmere clothing, and they're just walking in, and they have gold lacing on, on the frills, and, the, and then you can see some of them have their faces covered, and they come in. And then just a few moments later, the king walks in, and Corbin looks at all of you, yep. the majesty, perfect, and yeah. everybody bows. Uh, you know, I'm part of, I used to be a soldier, so I give him my shield, the shield, or sword to shield, I go down on the knee, put my sword down on the ground, right. hit down. And I'm going to because I'm a lady. <laughs> I'm going to get down on the knee. She's pants. The king walks in and just has a very somber look on his face. And he, he looks at you and just lifts his hand up and tells you guys, here I come. Corbin, where did my brother die? And Corbin points over to the couch that is the furthest towards the corner. The king walks over and he kneels down so where like there's a stain of blood on the ground. Are these the killing members? And Corbin nods and he turns and looks at you. Are you all safe? I came to you today because one, I wanted to see where my brother fell. You and I had a disagreement four nights ago. So the tragedy has come upon me. Thank you for pursuing his assassin and bringing that to their justice. But I have something of grave importance. Corbin said you guys found a dagger. Yes. Yeah. May I see? He goes over and sits on the couch and starts looking at it. start to speak, Corbin puts his hand right here on your chest oh. to stop you from speaking. Okay. And he just kind of looks at you like... Over in the Etanel Valley, strange reports of something fell from the sky. Penetrated the earth. They're saying that supernatural things are happening. And some sort of precious metal is coming from it. in the whole of the earth. What I am about to ask you is huge because you are not even out of your training. It will almost likely lead to your certain death. But we have to know. What I am about to tell you must remain secret. Yes. And he claps his hands. 
and all the guards in the emissaries exit the room. Just you guys with Corbin standing inside the room. Have a seat. I believe the Death King is returning. Corbin just kind of has this really shocked look on his face. There's an ancient prophecy that my father once told me. That when the triune moons join together, and the angels begin to fall, demons will return to this world, and the felt with it upon the release of the Death King. But the only way that the seals can be broken on the Death King's cage by pure celestial blood. Though you are of celestial nature, and you are of celestial nature, you're not pure blood. So elves, half elves, half dragons, even their blood cannot release the seal. It has to be a pure blood celestial. None of them have been seen since the the great outcasting have eaten out after the wolves. I believe what fell from the sky could be a pure celestial. If that is the case, then whoever these enemies are, I can promise you they are seeking this out just as much as we are. Are you celestials? Keep the death You are sworn to secrecy. Because I do not want to create mass panic. I have my beliefs. But as you know, some of you call them the most. That our political beliefs shouldn't match our public beliefs. If you know what, I mean. what I really believe, I can't tell the public because they stay with that. I believe that the final war is approaching. I never thought that it would happen. What is happening is true. The oracles have all spoken the signs. If they only killed the elves. We have, in fact, we have sent out all of the kills, including all the brand new machines, off to their requests. But you are the gods that I trust. So, I need you to leave tomorrow. In the early morning hours, sneak out of the, sneak out of the city. Sneak out of wood and mist through the sewers. Let no one see that you leave. It's a week's journey to the valley. See what you find there. I pour it back. I pray that the light of any ancient world falls upon you and keeps you safe. Because we must know. It's not that I don't care about your lives. out of the room and the guards meet him and they all kind of leave the area. Corbin kind of scratching his head sits down. I look at him. I mean the mission's really quite simple. Find the celestial, keep the death king from rising, and we're fine. Try not to die. Exactly. And then if we do it's only a few of us for a second eight billion. We will go as the king has requested. However, I think, I think what Edward was telling us the other night is, he said that his brother, that's why they had an argument, he said his brother was losing his mind. There have been no signs, and I've partnered with the oracles, and they said, they know. And we are in Winter Mist still, and on the Isle of Winter Mist, 
So the danger that is out there is something I believe that initiates can handle. However, you will take my lead, understood? Yes. No lone wolfing, dragon, rage. All right? Yes, sir. And if you're going to be inquisitive, yes. ensure that you talk to me about it before you set off some trap that kills you or the rest of us. Put the dagger in the copper chest. Leave it here. If it is cursed, we don't want to do this. Agreed? Yes. I will my dagger too. <laughs> I really like the link put it in there. Yeah, you just kind of... Cool. Oh, I throw mine. Just give it. Ha, yeah. <laughs> I have one that killed me. We will leave tonight. Instead of the morning. We will sink the fear sewers. The sewers are... filthy, which... And we know they are with filthy. It is not that I don't prefer to get my hands dirty, it's that I prefer to be... Sometimes you just gotta get dirty, man. I mean, cat. I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. However, unnecessary filth can be washed away by regular showers and baths. It's only proper. Why are you talking about me? Royal Guard. Do you guys understand why we are of the Rose? Do you understand why you were all chosen to be part of the Rose Guild and not the other guilds? Somewhere along the line in your heritage, the first day of your training, the pricks that they took from your fingers. They were testing your ancient bloodlines. Which means at some point, your bloodline crossed over with the bloodline of the rose. When this first started, this guild, this rose guild, it was all people with rose bloodline. But corruption and politics sank in. And so they kept it within the blood of the rose. No, no, pure blood that would have any chance to seek out power. So, you're related, however, distantly, and you have no royal claim. Thank God. Can you imagine her being queen? <laughs> listen, dear. <laughs> listen. I can shape shit up. Captain, respectfully. You. I need you to understand something, Kira. Yes. Child. And can 
considering that the Rose bloodline is that of mostly elves and humans. I would imagine what they would have been human inside of things. And then the dragon. Now, you can imagine the rest. <laughs> him walk into another room and he kind of spins on a bed and curls up like a cat. This very slightly drew craft since of the smell of fish wafting past his nose. He takes a sniff. <laughs> he takes a sniff and goes, Oh the mirror. Trying to have a settle. <laughs> no, I do not like fish. <laughs> I don't like fish. <laughs> I'm so right. I'm so glad it's like fish about you guys are kind of but we'll find out but not later. Yeah. <laughs> are we confined to this this area? Can we go to the tail? You can absolutely go to the okay. city of Winter Rescue. Yeah. No one's going I'll, down. I would like to City is, is safe for tieflings and things okay. like that, so. I want to find something like, you know, that causes fire. Ooh, <laughs> I know it's going to be white for it. I just, you know, is there a shop? I'm just going to motion over city. myself over <laughs> with the cause of fire. <laughs> all right. So you guys all leave there and you walk out into, if you just see this huge bustling metropolis. The streets are filled. When you guys are in the seventh district, right? The, uh, Edward was the mayor of the seventh district of Winter Mist. And like, it's just huge and bustling. You can see that there's just a ton of people everywhere of all races, of all sizes, everything just moving in and out of the street. I want you to think of New York City on a busy day. Like, that's what you guys want to get to. So I'm going to find a armor to sharpen my sword and the edges of my shield. I'm going to go to the bookstore and find the church to restock up all the objects. Okay. All right. Hold them here. Who did you get this for? Blacksmith, you are looking for a library and a church. Yep, because you gotta get in touch with the local exorcist. Yep, and you're looking for herbalist, nature <laughs> yeah. garden. Yeah, okay, something. 
We're gonna earn myself. All right. Okay. All right. So you you immediately kind of walk down the street. You're very familiar with Winter Miss. You lived here the majority of your life. You're kind of walking down the street, and you, you immediately come down to uh, uh, Igor's blacksmithing, right? And you walk in, and Igor is this really huge, obese man. He's just with no shirt, really covered in charcoal, and and he's just slamming away. And he looks up, and goes, "Oh, Shag Nasty, well, can I help you today?" Igor, my friend, I need my blade sharpened and my shield sharpened. The edges. Oh, okay, okay. I want them razor sharp. Lord of the Ravens got you something, doing something special, eh? That's exactly right. Is there anything else that you can uh, add on that can help me? Um, unfortunately, probably not for the cost of it in this shit's pocket. Oh, now come on. Don't be like that. Do our old friend a favor. Hey, just think. I got that pretty nice little shield of your that you've made. It's a walking billboard. Bring you in lots of money. I agree, but if your captain, the pussycat, were to find out that I upgraded an initiate's armor without his prior approval, you know how prompt and prissy he is. But just think. That saves his life. Is he gonna be thankful? I'll think about it. Leave your weapons here. Come back in an hour. I got you. Thank you, old friend. He takes your sword, kind of just puts it down on the table, <sighs> and turns around and just goes back to Henry. The seal that he's going at. There, right, you find like you find, you make your way. I mean, you, you're not as familiar with Winterus. You've only been here for a couple months, and you kind of make your way, and you kind of see this make your way down to the Grand Bazaar, and there's just little shops everywhere. Okay. What do you want to do? I guess I'm looking for an alchemist, is what I'm looking for. How are you going to look for it? Um, go find him. I'm going to go find him. Okay, all right. So what, you're going to head back towards the, the manor? Yeah, to the blacksmith where he was. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go right. find him and be like, hey man, All I right. need some help. Right, you see him coming out. He's kind of wiping the soot off of his uh, bracers because you know it's kind of sooty in the in the shop. You see her walk out to you. Hey, I need some help finding an outfit. I need something that's fire related. Oh, I've got the perfect person. Thank you. Let's go there. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> All right, all right. He leads you back into the Grand Bazaar, and you you slowly make your way, and you find uh, Tierra's alchemy. All right, and you walk in, and you walk into the shop, and all of a sudden you hear, well, hello. Hi. How can I help you guys today? Do you have anything that's fire-related, that causes fire, booms, explosions? You're going to have to be a little bit more specific. Any potions? Are you wanting to level a building, or are you wanting to start a campfire? Level a building. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, you're an initiate, right? I mean, who is it? I would never join the order. I like my family too much. Duly noted. Duly noted. Well, um, listen. I don't know if I can give you this because your initiates don't make that much, right? I mean, no. Like 10 silver pieces a week or something is your salary? Is that like a dig at me or? No, not at all. I'm just saying okay. this stuff is pricey and I have to report it to the royal captain that someone purchased this much. Just in case, you know, you want to blow up the palace or something. I don't think I would do that. No, I would do well, that. Got a little tingle of the dark in ya. <laughs> oh, we're using our mind and we're being very perceptive. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. But, what are you needing it for? Enemies. I'm going on a special mission. I need some, I want some firepower. There's enemies here in Winter Mist? Did I say here? Ruzar said that Edward died, and the guild that was protecting him was inept. Oh, is that what you heard? 
you know? I mean, do you trust the information that you get in a, in a bazaar? I mean, come on. I mean, really? And considering that this came from the Royal Captain's Guard who was just in here yesterday to buy a bunch of stuff, I would trust him. Okay. Do you have his name? Robert? You don't know who Ro Royal Captain Robert is? I just want to know his name. Are you Bolivar? I am. Ah, the Orphan Dragonborn. How are you? <laughs> Great. I need you to help my friend out. She's not getting any of that. I have to report that to the captain's guard. Now, come on now. You know, you know who I am. You know where I'm come from. You want me to give her a thousand crates of dynamite to level a building? Well, it doesn't have to be no, that much. We ain't doing you no said that. you wanted to level a building. It doesn't have to be that much, though. But that's what I'm going for. That's the couple effect. of sticks. Yeah, come on. That's all I'm looking for. You're giving it to me. Just two sticks? Three. Since you oh, that's easy. And puts on there. How Three silver we, pieces. How about we add four since you insulted me? I didn't insult you. Oh, you, you didn't? No. A little touch of darkness? Yeah, a little touch of darkness. There ain't nothing dark about this, sweet. Honey, I have a little touch of darkness in me, too. And he pulls back, and his skin all of a sudden turns to a different color. And it turns to a different color, it fades to like a dark, deep purple. And all of a sudden, you see these ears. His horns form out. I'm not insulting you. We all have a little touch of darkness in us. Okay, I see you. And he snaps back and he can I see you. I can only give you three. Four. I can only give you three. Fine. Three silver pieces. Okay, thanks, and he answered that way. Got something for you. What's Just that? because we share the same. He bends down and pulls something out. He hands this to you. It's an orange liquid. This is Careful with that. It shatters in your pocket. You're probably going to be missing a butt cheek. <laughs> what is the purpose of this? When you throw it, yeah. it goes boom. Boom. It goes boom. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Love boom. Orf, little Orphan Annie? <laughs> you guys this have a good time. This guy. I appreciate your business. Sure Thank enough. Sir. Ta ta for now. And, and he, he walks back into the back. I holler back out. Off the books. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You slowly make your way. Again, you you are also very familiar with what's are missing. You slowly make your way to the church. And as you start walking up to the church, you enter in and they're in some sort of prayer mass. It's very quiet. And the priest walks up to you and goes, Why is a raven here? I need to gather up some supplies. Stop. Are you an exorcist? Yes, sir. He slowly guides you around. He's like, You can't come in here during mass. You know this. I apologize. I didn't know mass was going on. Uh, exorcists are not allowed in the front of the church. They have to go through the back. Okay, I'm, I'm going back. <sighs> I will sit with you back in 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he nods and immediately kind of yeah. does okay. this weird blessing. Yeah. Not like a cross, because obviously. Right. Um, you know, the fingers in the holy water. Like yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. And he's, he's All right. He goes, he, goes, he goes inside. All right. You make your way back. And you kind of stand out there. And finally, the back door opens. And the same person comes out and drops a crate. He goes, Something big coming up. Yes. Ah, I've wanted. Just next time, you step back. Yes, sir. You know the exorcist know. people fear you. They see you coming. That emblem on your arm automatically identifies you as one. Me mm -hmm. hands you ten bottles of holy water. Okay. In the ancient lands, blessing be with you. you also be yeah. Turns around and goes inside. All right. After being, you know, briefly dead, <laughs> didn't like it, so I'm looking for something that might help me not be so dead. <laughs> hmm. Got our armor. How much money do I? 
There, in Winter Mist, there's definitely the Grand Bazaar where you can kind of wander through and see what you find. There is, of course, like any metropolis, a darker, seedy side of things, which you are well aware of where it's at. Because you guys have run training missions down there before. And you strictly remember a forbidden shop that one of these training missions as you were helping the uh, captain's guard arrest a criminal. I'll go to an alley, use my disguise kit just to look more <coughs> common, seedy, not a member of the Rose Guild. Okay. I'll make my way to this restricted area. Okay. You finally, you walk about 16 blocks and you finally get in and you can see this hole in the wall. It looks like a run-down old abandoned building. And you walk into this hole. As soon as you walk in the hole, you walk through like a portal. As you go through, you just see tons of shops lined and there are different hookers and drug dealers and things like that just all on the street. Very dark, very mysterious. But you're standing there, the stench of filth and stuff fills your nose. And you're standing there in the in the middle of the of this street. What do you want to do? Hmm. Go shopping. All right. Let's see. You want to go to the shop that you went to before, or try out different things? Yeah, I'll go to the extra CD shop. All right. So you make your way down, about halfway down this this alleyway, and you automatically recognize the symbol. As you're staring up at the symbol, all of a sudden it dawns on you. You see in the quarter of this diamond that's up there, you see just freshly painted the same symbol that you saw on the assassins. I'll go in. All right. As you walk in, the door just and you see someone hooded and cloaked tapping things with their fingers on this parchment of paper and their fingers are cut and bleeding and they're just what do you want? I recently had a bit of a dead period in my life. I was wanting to know what you have to keep me well alive. Start all of a sudden see them start going crazy with their fingers. <laughs> you want to prevent death? Somehow. Prevention comes with a sacrifice. What offering do you have? Any plant-based drugs? I'll give you the plant. I desire nothing of living nature or created things. And they're just writing like all kinds of weird strange symbols on this parchment. Well, I don't much desire my soul taken a little bit shit to go And then they stop and they just pull out their hands. The face is still covered. The hand is a dripping blood. Let me see your palm. No, I don't know what magic this is. What you might be to do. Do you want to never die? No, I never said that. I was looking for something that makes me harder to hit. Maybe Helmet went in my head. Try Helmet. a blacksmith. I went something that not a normal blacksmith can offer, but not sacrifice myself. <laughs> no, sacrifice. Maybe I came to the wrong shop. I can take uh, business in this alley. Oh, Mayor, you did not come to the wrong shop. Perhaps. <laughs> but like I said, fates brought you here. Yet we both now have responsibilities that can't be held. And grabs the scroll and starts rolling it up and blood just kind of... And then they walk, you see there's a candle, they put their skin on the candle. And then they put it onto the scroll and they peel back and a piece of the skin peels back like a seal onto the scroll. And you just see the wound close. They hand you the scroll. 
take the scroll. <laughs> Put it in my bag. Or nothing else is in, like, you know, little satchel. A gift from your parents. Interesting. Thank you, David. And I'll walk out, and as I'm leaving, I'm just going to kill his, all his candles with Drew Craft. <laughs> all right, you hit it. All the candles go out. I'm just, I'm just gonna walk out. Right. With Back. the scroll? You got the scroll? I got, yeah, I got, I have it on like a satchel, so I'm not touching it. Okay. All right. All right. You guys all meet back. I'll read, undisguise myself back to my normal rose guild self. All right. You guys meet back and you walk in, and Corbin's in the living room, and he's he's kind of spitting, spitting a weapon. Oh, we should totally get a kitty litter. I mean, like, a cat. Spitting a weapon to use. Oh, but. You want to this guy? Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. There you go. I made sure that it was sharp and not extra magical. Thank you. It's really sharp. Initiates cannot have magic weapons, you know this. What about my shield? Your shield is sharp, but not magical. Uh, but this one is sharp. It's our one. Find all the supplies that you need. <laughs> he starts walking out of the room and all you just hear him say is, I know, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna nudge all of you and just like, uh, cat neck, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was just gonna say, I can go over to, you know, some bare ground. <laughs> really use mold earth and druid craft and essentially sand. <laughs> I'll just hand you a bag of sand. Oh. <laughs> so, you guys, he's he's you see him packing up his bag and goes, "Are you ready for your journey?" He slaps it onto his back. Are you ready? Ready. Dark is fall. We will need to enter in through the back alleys. Follow me quickly. Quietly. Everyone roll a stealth check. <coughs> Five. I got thirteen. Okay, oh, thirteen. Seven. Seven. Yep, seven. Yeah, seven. So two sevens. Two thirteen. Yep. Two thirteen. Yep. You, you two kind of just sneak out through the doors just easily, right? And you two just kind of hit the door frames. Corbin stops, turns around. It's rather dark. Sorry. All right, come on, follow me. All right, you guys, they all start taking off, and you guys all start moving through the area, and you're, you're kind of moving quick through the city streets. They're empty compared to what it was during the day when you guys were shopping. The night is pitch black. Just a few stars in the sky, and you guys are roaming your ways through the city streets. You finally start passing by the alley that you snuck into. And as you're passing by the alley, you look into the hole in the wall, and you see the hooded figure standing there, but just smiling. All you, you can't see his face, but just smiling as you pass by. Are there any candles? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and just you pass by, right? You guys finally, about 15 minutes later, come to a sewer entrance. Corbin lifts it up and says, All right, you finish checking this team. Let's go. All right. Now, I'm going to climb down. <laughs> Three. Three. Oh, All right. Hold on. Hold on. What's one? Eight. All right. And I'm you, 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 you get down, you kind of slide down just a little bit. Kind of, you might know, lose your footing for a second, but you grab it and get back down the ladder. Okay. Here I am. And don't drop that bottle. Sir. It's a 13. That's right. what I add to it. Mm -hmm. Athletics. Negative one, so it's 12. All right. So you slide down very easily. You get down. Nice. All right. Olamir. Twenty. All right. 
you just kind of you kind of do some parkour into and just kind of land land right in front of uh, Kira and Bolivar and you just kind of land and you just wink at them. Nice. I'm Seven, eight, nine. Nine. All right. As you start to climb down, as you start to climb down, all of a sudden you hear, and Corbin looks up, and he's like, hold on. And he holds out his hand, and a raven lands on his hand with a message. And he pulls it out and sends the raven away, opens it up. Go down. Go down. Okay. All right. And he slides down. He comes receives word from a couple of captain's guilds. Devious is dead. Who's um, that? He is the captain of I thought my ghost guild. No, he served the king for two thousand years. Also, there's some great dark things happening in the land of Isol. Carissa, the guild captain there, was speaking of it. And my last matter, the daughter of the king is missing. She is the captain of the entire order of the Raven. Should we go find her? You all met Tessiana on your first day. Mm -hmm. She's missing. Rolls up the scroll, puts it in his pocket. This changes everything. And then all of a sudden you hear in the darkness, oh yes, it does. And then Corbin kind of steps in front of you, puts his hands in, and he goes, and she gets back, wait, you? How did you get into the city? 